Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am VC Pramod and with me is Anita Anand with the Midday News. The headlines. A high-level India-Russia intergovernmental consultation on Afghanistan is underway in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to chair 13th BRIC summit tomorrow virtually. Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Anurag Singh Thakur to felicitate Paralympics medal winners in New Delhi today. Center decides to allow induction of women into the National Defence Academy. India administers over 70 crore 75 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate reaches 97.48%. In Kerala, test results of 20 persons for Nipah virus infection in Kori code found negative. Taliban announces caretaker government in Afghanistan, Mullah Hassan Akhund, to be the acting prime minister. BJP announces election in charge for poll-bound states. Today is International Literacy Day, and in U.S. Open tennis, Canadian Leila Fernandez enters the women single semi-finals. and daniel medvedev reaches men's single semi final as the nationwide free covid-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated we also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as covid-19 remains a threat to our health please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene For any covid information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 011 2397 8046 and 1075 and now the news in detail a high level india russia intergovernmental consultation on afghanistan is underway in new delhi the visiting russian national secretary advisor general nikolai patrushev is leading his country's delegation while the indian side is being represented by nsa ajit dhoval The Russian NSA will also call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar today. Sources said the two countries will review the political, security and humanitarian situation in Afghanistan, activities of terrorist groups including Jaish-e Mohammed and Lashkar-e-Taiba, threats from drugs and the role of regional countries. The two sides will also deliberate on details of Indo-Russia cooperation to meet the current and future threats and measures to assist the crisis hit country the consultations reflect the entirely new situation in afghanistan created by the withdrawal of us forces and takeover by taliban they also reflect the desire importance and potential for significant increase in political and security cooperation between india and russia in afghanistan both countries share similar concerns on terrorism especially to ensure that the taliban adhere to their promises and assurances The consultations are a follow-up to the telephone conversation between Prime Minister Modi and President of the Russian Federation Vladimir Putin on the 24th of last month. The two leaders had expressed the view that it is important for the two strategic partners to work together and instructed their senior officials to remain in touch on Afghanistan. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will chair the 13th Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa summit tomorrow in virtual format. The theme for the summit is BRICS at the rate 15 intra BRICS cooperation for continuity consolidation and consensus. India had outlined four priority areas for its chairship. These are reform of the multilateral system, counter terrorism, using digital and technological tools for achieving SDGs and enhancing people to people exchanges. A report The BRICS leaders will exchange views on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and other current global and regional issues. The meeting will be attended by President of Brazil Jair Bolsonaro, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Chinese President Xi Jinping and President of South Africa Cyril Ramaphosa. This is the second time Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be chairing the BRICS summit. earlier he had chaired the goa summit in 2016 the indian chairship of brics this year coincides with the 15th anniversary of brics 
इंडिया नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एडवाइजर अजीत डोभाल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक मार्कस त्रोजो द प्रो टेम्परेट चेयर ऑफ ब्रिक्स बिजनेस काउंसिल ओंकार कंवर एंड प्रो टेम्परेट चेयर ऑफ द ब्रिक्स वीमेन्स बिजनेस अलायंस डॉक्टर संगीता रेड्डी विल प्रेजेंट रिपोर्ट ऑन द आउटकम परस्यूड दिस ईयर अंडर देयर ट्रैक्स टू द लीडर्स ड्यूरिंग द समिट अनुपम मिश्र ए आर न्यूज डेली Talking to AIR News, defence expert C. Uday Bhaskar said the summit is significant in view of the ongoing developments in Afghanistan. BRICS meeting has a very important deliberation at summit level. I think Prime Minister Modi would be able to steer the discussion as the chair in the appropriate manner about the implications of the Taliban in Afghanistan. And given the fact that Prime Minister Modi himself has alerted the global community. about the scourge of terrorism i think getting some kind of consensus among the brics countries would be very valuable because at the moment russia and china have indicated that they are more empathetic the taliban than the other members of the security council as far as the permanent members are concerned so i see the brics meeting as very important in putting india's own agenda and concerns on the table and seeing whether consensus is possible in terms of the final statement He also said the situation in Afghanistan is a cause of concern for India as the Taliban led government is pro Pakistan. Currently the political developments in Afghanistan are cause for concern from the Indian perspective. If you look at the current composition of the interim government that has been announced orientation is very very pro Pakistani and therefore the inference is that they could act in a manner that would be detrimental to india's own core security interests but broadly i would say that the composition of the interim government does not accommodate either the non pashtun element within the afghanistan political spectrum and even amongst those who have been chosen from within the taliban my reading is that many of them are of the extreme taliban ideology and the representatives in doha who seem to be the equivalent of a more progressive taliban have not been included india has administered over 70 crore 75 lakh doses of covid vaccine so far under the nationwide vaccination drive union health ministry said more than 78 lakh 47000 vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours the ministry said 39100 14 covid patients recovered during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate has reached 97.48% over 70 crore 31 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far the vaccines have been given through the central government free of cost channel and direct trade procurement category more than 8 lakh doses are in the pipeline Union Health Ministry said over 5 crore 64 lakh balance and unutilized covid vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories. In Madhya Pradesh the work of setting up oxygen plants is being done on a war footing. Out of 190 oxygen plants being set up in Madhya Pradesh, 88 plants have become functional till now. The oxygen capacity of these plants is 45,890 liters per minute. More from our correspondent. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that state is now self-reliant in the field of medical oxygen expressing gratitude to Prime Minister Narendra Modi Chief Minister said that out of 190 oxygen plants being set up in the state 102 plants are being set up with the cooperation of the central government all 190 plants will start functioning by the end of September Meanwhile state reported 11 new cases the number of active cases in the state is 127 while over 4 crore 94 lakh covid-19 vaccine doses have been administered so far Pooja Pivardhan AIR News Bhopal In wake of the covid situation the West Bengal government has asked district administrations to take more precautions where covid positivity rate is over 2% the state has advised the concerned districts to amplify testing and tracing more from our kolkata correspondent the state government has already allowed the puja committees to carry on their preparations for the upcoming festival following covid guidelines however according to healthcare experts the situation may turn worse if social distancing and other covid protocol is not maintained properly during the pujas the state administration has clearly instructed the districts to take proper measures 
particularly where the positivity rate is beyond 2%. Districts like Darjeeling, North 24 Parganas, Jhargram, Nodia and Jalpaiguri have already been asked to carry on more tests and to expedite the vaccination process as well. Meanwhile, a new protocol for international travellers will also be in force. Along with UK and Brazil, passengers coming from or transiting through seven more countries will have to undergo RT-PCR test on arrival, irrespective of negative test report and complete vaccination. The newly added countries are New Zealand, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, Botswana, China, Bangladesh and South Africa. Modu Parnadhar Chaudhuri for IIA News, Kolkata. Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations will not be allowed at public places in the national capital in view of COVID-19 pandemic. Delhi Disaster Management Authority has advised the people to celebrate the festival at home. The decision has been taken considering the prevailing restrictions on gatherings and congregations and the present situation of the pandemic. In Bihar, fortnight-long Pitri Paksh Mela at Gaya will not be organized this year. However, devotees arriving at Gaya to offer Pindadan will be allowed to perform the rituals in complete adherence to COVID guidelines. The Mela was not organized last year due to COVID. In Kerala, samples taken from 20 persons for testing Nipah virus infection in Korea code have generated negative results. With this, samples of 30 persons who came into contact with the 12-year-old boy who died last Sunday due to the viral infection were found to be negative. The results of 21 more samples are expected today. State Health Minister Veena George told media persons that 10 more admissions were made last night taking the number of persons currently kept under isolation at the Kori Code Medical College Hospital to 68. She said the health condition of all those admitted in the hospital is stable. The minister said as per Nipah protocol, the area can be termed virus-free 42 days after the last reported case. BJP has appointed Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan as the party's election in charge for the upcoming Uttar Pradesh Assembly polls. Union Ministers Anurag Singh Thakur, Arjun Ram Meghwal, Shobha Karanjale and Annapurna Devi along with three other BJP leaders have been made co-in charges for poll affairs in the state. The party has also divided the state into six regions and made separate in charges for the organizational work. Union Minister Prahla Joshi will look after the poll affairs in Uttarakhand assisted by two co-in charges. First Assembly elections in Punjab, Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat will be the in-charge and Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri and Meenakshi Lekhi will be the co-in-charges. The party has named Union Minister Bhupendra Yadav to be in-charge of Manipur Assembly elections. He will be assisted by Union Minister Pratima Bhaumik and Assam Minister Ashok Singhal. Former Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis has been made in charge of Goa Assembly polls and Union Ministers G. Kishan Reddy and Darshana Jardosh will be the co-in charges. The central government today informed the Supreme Court that it has taken decision to allow induction of women into National Defence Academy NDA. The government said the decision was taken in consultation with armed forces. Additional Solicitor General Eshwarya Bharti informed the Apex Court of the decision. The court proceeded to record the same and posted the case for further hearing on September 22. The top court on 18th of last month ruled that women be allowed to face the NDA entrance exam for gaining commission as officers in defence services. With this, not only have the doors been opened, thrown open for women to gain permanent commission in the Indian Army, Air Force and Navy, the decision has long-term ramifications regarding the future of women in the armed forces. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. A high-level India-Russia intergovernmental consultation on Afghanistan is underway in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to chair 13th BRICS summit tomorrow virtually. Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Anurad Singh Thakur to felicitate Paralympics medal winners in New Delhi today. Centre decides to allow induction of women into National Defence Academy. India administers over 70 crore 75 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate reaches 97.48%. In Kerala, test results of 20 persons for Nipah virus infection in Kori Code found negative. Taliban announces caretaker government in Afghanistan, Mullah Hassan Akhun, to be the acting Prime Minister. BJP announces election in charge for poll-bound states. Today is the International Literacy Day. 
and in US Open tennis, Canadian Leila Fernandez enters the women's singles semifinals, and Daniel Medvedev reaches in men's singles semifinals. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday News. The Taliban group has announced its caretaker government in Afghanistan. The all-male interim cabinet will be headed by Mullah Hassan Akhund as acting prime minister. Akhund belongs to Kandhar and led the group's leadership council, which directed insurgent attacks against the United States and Allied forces during nearly 20 years of war. Reclusive Taliban chief Haibatullah Akhundzada will be the supreme leader of the government. While sharing details of the caretaker cabinet at a news conference in Kabul last evening, Taliban chief spokesperson Zebiullah Mujahid said all the appointments were in an acting capacity and that the heads of various other ministries will be appointed soon. Haryana government has extended the suspension of internet services, all SMS services including bulk SMS services except banking and mobile recharge services and all dongle services except the voice calls in the district of Karnal till 11.59pm today in view of Kisan protest in Karnal. The orders by Department of Home Affairs said as per reports from additional DG of Police, CID, the situation in Karnal is still volatile and further intensification of farmers' protest is expected which may adversely affect the public safety and law and order situation in the district of Karnal. The government said the telecom services are being further suspended because rumours and misinformation on social media platforms may mobilise the agitators and demonstrators leading to deterioration of law and order situation in the district. The Centre has constituted a task force to improve internet connectivity in Karnataka. The Electronics and Information Technology Ministry's task force consisting of officers of National Internet Exchange of India and Software Technology Parks of India will visit each district and meet people over the issue. They will also visit state government officials and submit a report to Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. During the recent BJP's Jan Ashirwad Yatra in the state, the minister had received numerous requests for improving the speed and access of internet connectivity in the area. In various rain-related incidents, five people died since yesterday in Maharashtra. Two more dead bodies were recovered in Nandir district today. Very heavy rains are reported in Ratnagiri district on yesterday. Chivloon and Harnai have received more than 350 millimeters of rain. One team of NDRF is deployed in Chivloon. More than 475 millimeters rain is recorded in Murud in Raigad district. Rivers and dams are overflowing in various districts and water is being released, which has disturbed the lives of citizens. The Central Board of Direct Taxes has amended the income tax rules to ease authentication of electronic records submitted in faceless assessment proceedings. The Finance Ministry said electronic records submitted through registered account of the taxpayers in the income tax portal shall be deemed to have been authenticated by the taxpayer by electronic verification code. The move will ease the process of authentication of electronic records in faceless assessment proceedings. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events is being organized by the government as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mohotsav. Let's listen now to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar. Azadi Ka Amrit Mohotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day.
On this very day in 1897, Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Tilak was charged for sedition for his criticism of the British rule in his Marathi newspaper named Kesari. This was an important moment in India's political history as it marked the criminalization of dissent as a grand spectacle of a political trial. Tilak was charged for the publication of two texts, Shivaji's utterances, a poem and an unsigned report on the June 1897 Shivaji festival at which Tilak spoke. In 1897, Chapekar brother shot dead two British officers, namely the collector of Pune, Mr. Rand, who was responsible for the plague measures, and a young military officer. This incident caused intense indignation among the Europeans and in the British government of India. It was pointed out that the murders of the two officers were the direct result of the incitement caused by Tilak's speeches and articles. They Due to prosecution's narrow legal interpretation, the texts were reduced to mean incitement of feelings of disaffection. After six days of litigation, the jury announced Tilak guilty and Tilak was sentenced to 18 months of imprisonment. Incidentally, Tilak was imprisoned thrice under the sedition law by the British. When the nationalists were waging a war against the colonial rulers, spiritualists lifted the morale of Indians and told the Western world about the greatest philosophy of Hinduism, thus garnering the support of the world for India's freedom. One such spiritualist, Swami Abhedananda, was born on this date in the year 1866. He was a direct disciple of Swami Ramakrishna Paramhans, Swami Vivekananda sent Swami Abhedananda to the USA. He went to the USA in 1897 as the head of the Vedanta Society of New York and preached messages of Vedanta and teachings of his guru. For about 25 years, he traveled far and wide to the United States, Canada, Mexico, Japan and Hong Kong. After attending the Pan-Pacific Education Conference at Honolulu, he returned to India in 1922. He also crossed the Himalayas on foot and reached Tibet, where he studied Tibetan Buddhism. He left for his heavenly abode on the 8th of September 1939. But his spiritual teachings continue to guide people on their spiritual journey. Today is the death anniversary of Firoz Gandhi, who was a freedom fighter, journalist, and a parliamentarian, Firoz, who was born on 12th of September 1912 in a Parsi family, quit studies to take part in India's freedom struggle. He was imprisoned in 1930 along with Lal Bahadur Shastri and was lodged in the Fezabad jail for 19 months. Soon after his release, he was imprisoned twice in 1932 and in 1933. Firoz Gandhi married Indira Gandhi in 1942. The couple were arrested and jailed in August 1942 during the Quit India movement less than six months after their marriage. Even after being allowed to report on the parliamentary proceedings and against the publication of any such proceedings, having started his career as a scribe, Feroz understood the importance of freedom of the press. It is because of a private member's bill introduced by Feroz in 1956, it is possible for media to report parliament proceedings. Feroz died in 1960 in Delhi. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar AIR News Kisang. See you in the next episode tomorrow.
स्वाधीनता संग्राम के वे निशान जो साक्षी हैं हमारे सेनानियों के संघर्ष और बलिदान के आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष श्रृंखला निशान हर बुधवार को शाम चार बजकर पैंतालीस मिनट पर कार्यक्रम परिक्रमा में एफएम गोल्ड सौ दशमलव एक मेगा हर्ट पर In today's episode we will bring you the historical importance of the cellular jail also known as Kala Pani at Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the freedom movement of the country. As a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav AIR News has been celebrating the glory of art and culture of the country today we shall bring the melody of the doyan of music Bhupen Hazarika in our program Parikrama at 4:30 p.m. Dil hum hum kare घबराए धन धम धम करे कर जाए एक बूंद कभी पानी की International Literacy Day is being observed today the day aims to highlight the importance of literacy for individuals communities and societies and the need for intensified efforts towards more literate societies 8th of September was proclaimed International Literacy Day by the United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO in 1966 Indian Paralympics medal winners will be felicitated at a function in New Delhi this evening sports minister Anurag Singh Thakur and minister of state Nishad Pramanik will felicitate them the country bagged an all time high 19 medals including 5 gold 8 silver and 6 bronze in the recently concluded Tokyo Paralympic Games in US Open tennis Canadian teenage sensation Leila Fernandez produced another fearless performance by defeating fifth seed Elena Svitolina of Ukraine to reach the women's singles semifinals in men's singles world number 2 Daniel Medvedev has entered into the semifinal after defeating Dutchman Potek von de Zand Scholp at the Flushing Meadows the Russian is into the last four of the US Open for the third straight year he will meet Canadian 12th seed Felix Auger Aliasim in the last four Union cabinet today approved the production linked incentive scheme for textiles under this the incentives worth 10683 crore rupees will be provided over 5 years briefing reporters in new delhi textiles minister piyush goel said this will positively impact states like gujarat uttar pradesh maharashtra tamil nadu punjab andhra pradesh Telangana and Odisha Now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi is predicted to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will rise from a minimum of 26 to a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain and the temperature will hover between 23 to 28 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The maximum temperature is expected to be 35 degrees and it recorded a minimum temperature of 26 degrees. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with few spells of rain or thunder showers. It had a minimum temperature of 26 degrees Celsius while maximum is expected to be around 32 degrees. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. A high level India Russia intergovernmental consultation on Afghanistan is underway in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to chair 13th BRIC summit tomorrow virtually. Union cabinet approves production linked incentive scheme for textiles. Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Anurag Singh Thakur to felicitate Paralympics medal winners in New Delhi today. Center decides to allow induction of women into National Defence Academy. India administers over 70 crore 75 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine so far under the nationwide vaccination drive recovery rate reaches 97.48% in Kerala test results of 20 persons for Nipah virus infection in Koori code found negative Taliban announces caretaker government in Afghanistan Mullah Hassan Akhund to be the acting prime minister BJP announces election in charge for poll bound states. Today is International Literacy Day. 
and in US Open tennis Canadian Leila Fernandez enters the women single semi finals and Daniel Medvedev reaches men singles final for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and the news on air app and with that we end the midday news